Hello! Welcome to the Lilliputian Librarian. Today, I will be reading Clarice, The Chicest Mouse in Paris, Holiday Heist by Megan Hess. In New York for winter was chic little Clarice. She traveled so far from her maison in Paris. With her friend by her side, a cat called Monsieur. Christmas would be a dream, of that she was sure. The whole family loved prepping their New York abode for the holiday season while outside it snowed. Well, all except one, their daughter, the brat, who can make a big fuss at the drop of a hat. Where are my other gifts? She screeched in dismay. We have to go out to buy lots more today. While Madame calmed down her terrible brat, Monsieur pricked an ear. Oh, did you hear that? What fabulous news! We're out for the day to Fifth Avenue and the Bergdorf's Cafe. Clarice clapped with delight. Manhattan won't wait. Now to choose a fun look for this tray, lovely date. A fashion show was afoot as she tried to decide on the most festive look for the Upper East Side. A Valentino cape would be perfect for snow with some fluffy Chanel or Fendi with bows. Soon Madame was calling her driver outside and Clarice saw something she couldn't abide. Some small mice were shivering, no shoes on their feet. They were hiding away from the wind and the sleet. They asked, chattering, can you spare some food, please? Oh dear, Claire said, I'm all out of cheese. Before she could find the right way to assist, the car had arrived and off she was whisked. Claire's held Monsieur's paw. She was feeling quite blue. She wanted to help them, but what could she do? They soon came to a store wrapped in bows with great flair. It was magical, beautiful New York's Cartier. As the brat made a beeline for jewels shining bright, Clarice was drawn to an interesting sight. A man at the counter saw vintage and chic. Can you polish this ring? It's precious antique. It's my wife's wedding band. Fifty years were united. It's a family heirloom. She will be so delighted. Claris watched in awe and held back her tears. How splendid, she thought, to be loved all those years. He left the ring on the glass, but what caught her eye? Why, paw from a bag, it was ever so sly. The paw snatched the ring at incredible speed. Our mouse gave a gasp. <gasps> what a horrible deed! Yet the bank's stylish owner did not seem to know that she harbored a thief quite clearly a pro. Claire's monsieur, without missing a beat, went after the woman out onto the street. The woman walked fast, her little boot tins click clacking. The chase was now on and it was nerve wracking. She hailed a cab, Upper East, Lower West? Either way, our two heroes would not stop their quest. Quick, Claire's jump! They can't get away. This taxi's about to take off for Broadway. As they zoomed through New York, past the lights of Times Square, no one noticed this unlikely crime-busting pair. The taxi pulled up at a grand old town house. Come on, monsieur, said a brave little mouse. Follow my lead, as the plan that's foolproof. A window was open up there on the roof. They scurried and darted from the rail to the ledge. Stopping this burglar was Clarice's pledge. They burst through the window and were shocked to see the spoils of this thief's elaborate crime spree. 
The smug cat lay sprawled in a jewel-covered nest. Liz Taylor herself would have been so impressed. He admired the ring that he'd stolen that morn and cast it aside with the others and yawned. Clarice quickly marched over and seized back the ring. You are best a cat burglar, and I must say one thing. You're not just stealing jewelry, but breaking the hearts of people in love, tearing memories apart. The thief startled, then let out a frightening growl. Get out, little mouse, or I'll eat you, he yowled. Monsieur bared his teeth, and the burglar shrank back. It seemed Clarice was safe from becoming his snack. With the ring in her clutches, Clarice was sure they were ready to finish this little detour. As they left, she hoped they had planted the seed that the thief should retire from his incessant greed. Let's take back this ring. It's high time we split. Cartier closes soon, so let's step on it. They hitched a ride back with a nice horse named Dazzle, arranged by their French friends Ari and Basil. As they passed the Central Park, Chris polished the ring so the man could collect it that same evening. At Cartier, the brat could be heard from outside, still wanting more gifts, though the bows were all tied. I want more, the brat screamed. It's all about me. I don't have enough. Oh, why can't you see? Her nasty explosion gave Clarice a chance to return the man's ring without drawing a glance. As they stood on the sidewalk, awaiting their car, Claire saw a white flash darting in from afar. It was there for one second, but then lost to sight, and moving so fast it gave Claire a fright. The doorman looked down. All these jewels had appeared, but who did they come from? How terribly weird. Claire realized the cat might be changing his ways and giving up theft till the end of his days. From Fifth to Tribeca, past New York's best art, our pair taught a thief to remember his heart. It was time to go home, as a good deed was done. What an adventure, and oh, so much fun! Merry Christmas, said Monsieur. Your heart is so true. You are so kind to others. Now here's something for you. Clarice opened the box and found her favorite cheese. She smiled and gave him a big mousy squeeze. Her face filled with joy and she suddenly knew there's one last thing that we just have to do. Clarice and Monsieur found those mice in the cold and brought them some cheese, warmth and bubbles and gold. Clarice didn't have much, but still plenty to share. It's important in life to show that you care. What matters the most is not what you can take, but good times with friends, all the memories you'll make. The new friends all laughed as snow fell from above, and Clarence knew that the meaning of Christmas was love. The End